Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So this morning, amen, we are so glad that you could join us both on Facebook Live and on the internet and may come on the archives. May God richly bless you this morning. My name is Brother Virgil C. Passad. I'm the pastor here at the Bride Age Christian Fellowship, a group of believers here in Orlando, Florida, United States of America. Amen. Broadcasting to the world, telling you that the rapture is at hand. We believe in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, the rapture is at hand. The squeeze is on. Amen. We're in a pre-tribulation period. Amen. And that's what we believe. So this morning, we like to turn to four portions of Scripture. Four portions of Scripture. We like to turn to... Uh, we've been uh, studying... Um, a few things this morning we like to turn to. Uh, we've been studying over the last the last four weeks, few weeks. We've been studying. Um, praise God! We've been studying the rapture and so on. So uh, we want to read a familiar scriptures. First Thessalonians four. First Thessalonians four, verses thirteen to seventeen. First Thessalonians four, verses. Uh, 13 to 17. First Thessalonians 4 verse 13 to 17. And if you might have difficulty in finding it, it's okay. We'll read it. Um, praise God. And then we'll read in St. Matthew chapter 27 verses 45 to 53. St. Matthew chapter 27 verses 45 to 53. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then, then we'll go to the book of Revelation. We'll read two portions in the book of Revelation. Two portions in the book of Revelation. Read Revelation chapter 10 verse 1 to 11. Revelation chapter 10 verse 1 to 11. It's the easiest one to find. It's the last book in the Bible. So when I'm about to read it, you could quickly turn to it. And Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 to 16. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 to 16. So let's read First Thessalonians 4, uh, verses 13 to 17. So shall we stand for the, in respect to the reading of God's word this morning? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren. In other words, Paul is saying, I'm going to teach you some things. You've got to learn this. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that we sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, that means shall not precede, them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and the tr with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'd like to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 45 to 53. Matthew chapter 27. It's in the New Testament. First book in the New Testament. Yep, not too far there. Matthew chapter 27. Reading from verse 40, 45 to 53. Now from the sixth hour, this is when Jesus was crucified. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabutachnani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard it said, This man called it for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and put a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed to give him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Note carefully verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. 
And behold, a veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. So notice something in there, a few things. Jesus cried with a loud voice. And then what happened? There was an earthquake. And then what happened? Uh, the graves woke up. And the saints came up what? After he rose first. Amen? Let's read now Revelation chapter 10 verse 1. Revelation, last book in the New Testament. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Revelation chapter 10. Very familiar scripture. From verse, we read a whole scripture because this involves the whole rapture here. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was about upon his head and his feet as it were with the sun and his feet, sorry, his face was it as it were with the, were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. And in his hand he a little book opened. Now if you go back in Revelation chapter 5 and 4 and so on, this book was closed. But now the book is open. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea. And his left foot upon the earth. And cried with a loud voice. As when a lion roareth. And when he had cried. Now look this loud voice again. Same voice that Jesus cried. Loud voice. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. Now who is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Oh Lord Jesus Christ. And when he had cried. Only when he had cried with his loud voice, what happened? Seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lift up his hand. Now this happened only when? After the seven thunders uttered their voices. What happened? He lift up his hand to heaven and swore by him that liveth forever and forever who created heaven and the things therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there shall be time no longer but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants a prophet. Now listen. He has sworn now the time no more but in between that time when the seven thunders uttered his voices and when he swore, hear what the angel is saying. And the voice which I heard, the voice again now, voice, before the angel swore, this was the voice. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto thee, Take it, eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be sweet in thy mouth as honey. In my mouth sweet as honey. In other words, you'll, that revelation of the word of God of the rapture is going to be sweet, wonderful. You're going to rejoice, but you'll be in a squeeze. Amen? Make your belly bitter. Amen? And I took, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it. And it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many tongues and nations and, and, and tongues and, and kings. Amen. So I just want to put, you see that portion between 8 to 11 is fit be, after that voice that he, that he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roared. Amen. And, and between that time that he cried that the lion roared to the point where he swore time is no more. What happened? Or oh, Revelation chapter uh, chapter eight, um, chapter ten, verses eight to eleven took place, and then he swore, "Time is no more." So I'm going to talk about a little bit about that, and we'll ask to, we'll have to read one more scripture, last portion of scripture, Revelation 19. Amen. All this is in the, is in the rapture. Amen. Revelation 19, and we read in from verse seven to sixteen. Let us be glad. And rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife had made herself ready. So listen closely. So something is making this bride get herself ready. What was it? The shout of the king was in the camp. 
a short message saying, get up, rise up, the bridegroom cometh, the bride gets ready. Amen? So this is the shop right here. She's getting ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So you see what is this happening? Between the voice and the, between the, the shout and the voice that we preached on last service, amen, was what? Getting yourself ready, righteousness of the saints. But listen what happened now. And he said unto me, right, blessed are they, they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And what calls you to the marriage supper of the Lamb? The trump of God. Amen. So there's the trump. Right here you see in the rapture. You see in the voice. You see in the shout. You see in the voice. You see in the trump. Amen. And uh, he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I'm thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus and uh, of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You know, watch carefully. We just heard the trump of God. And what happens after the trump? And I saw heaven opened. And behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his head was many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Amen. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Amen. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it be the smite to smite the nations. That he might rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the wine press of the fierceness of God. Of, of almighty God. And he had... And he had on his vesture and on his tie a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. This was the word of God. Amen. So uh, may God add a blessing to the word of the living God, shall we pray. Father God, we love you. We adore you. Oh my, we see so much things already in this scripture, in this Bible that we have read, Lord. We've seen you come down in, your, in our midst, Lord, and just open up that word that even I didn't see some of these things while even studying, Lord. So, Father God, I pray that you open up the ears and the hearts of the people that they may understand about this rapture because the rapture is a revelation to the bride. She must get a revelation of this rapture to get into the bride because how could we know what we're looking for? Or how could we know what we receive unless we know what we're looking for, Lord? We must know about this rapture. So reveal it unto the people, Lord. May it shake the people that they may know that they must come into the rapture. Touch your servant. Move me out of the way, Lord. I, if I said anything boastful or make it look like I'm a somebody, Lord, I'm, I'm your unprofitable servant. Use me according to your will, Lord. You know how I am, Lord, how I feel, Lord. But Lord, in this body, but you are the great God Almighty. Speak to the people. May this message shake the world. Quick, short, powerful message on the rapture. Shake the world, Lord. Shake the nation. Shake the people that they'll get. They'll receive of you, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask it. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. So this morning... We like to continue our study on the rapture. We like to continue our study on the rapture. And this morning, uh, we're going to name this, uh, uh, the title of our message is The Rapture Part 5. Amen. From the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. So somewhere from the voice of that archangel, what happened with the voice of the archangel to the trump of God is what we're going to talk. We're not going to talk so much about the trump today. We're going to just touch a little briefly so you know what we're talking about. But there's a transition period. Now, this is how God works. Amen? Every age, church age, there's, over, there's always an overlap. Right, right, now, like right now, there's an overlap into the tribulation period. We're in the pre-tribulation period. We'll start to see this, the effects of the tribulation period. Amen. And every church age, it, it is an, always an overlap into the other church age. Amen. And in Laodicea, Laodicea church age, there's always that overlap into that bride age in which the bride become perfect. Amen. So that's what we're talking about. This overlap. Amen. This uh, uh, transitioning over. Amen. From the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. And what is our subject? Our subject has always been our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our subject this morning is Jesus Christ, our soon coming husband and king. Jesus Christ, our soon coming husband 
and king. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our God. He's our King. He's our husband. He's our all in all. Amen. He's your friend. He's your mother. He's your father. He's everything. Everything to me. Oh, you know the song writer says, He is everything. He's everything. He's everything to me. He's my mother, my brother, my sister, and my father. He's everything to me. Amen. Just trust in Him. So what is our inspiration? Why are we looking at this, at this study of this rapture? Why? What, what, what is our inspiration? What is driving us? Because the Bible say He will bring us to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. According to Ephesians 4, 11, 4, I think it is 11, He said, He gave some pastors and prophets and teachers and evangelists and so on. To what? For the perfecting of the saints. To bring you to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Amen. So that we, what is our inspiration this morning? Our inspiration is understanding God's promise of the rapture. Understanding God's promise of the rapture. So I'm going to take a few minutes for those who did not hear the prior messages to give you a summary, a summarizing. I'm going to be just quick on this summary. Amen. Because we have more detailed um, explanation, a detailed uh, ministry, a ministering on these uh, messages. And if you want, uh, um, you can uh, subscribe to our, our web, uh, I'm not sorry, subscribe to our, um, our YouTube channel, Bride Age Christian Fellowship. And there you'll find um, Revelation chapter uh, part one. I'm sorry, the Rapture part one, the Rapture part two, Rapture part three, and Rapture part four. And now we're in the Rapture, the part, the fifth part of the Rapture, which is from the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So the Rapture, according to First Thessalonians four six. 416 or 413 to 17. The rapture is not something sudden like that. Amen. The rapture is a period of time. We are actually in the rapture right now. Hallelujah. Amen. We are and we are in a phase of the rapture. We are in a part of the, the rapture. It's a period of time. Amen. It's a shout. It's a voice. It's a trump. It's a sleeping scene rising. It's a catching away. Amen. To, to, it's a catching away to the, in the sky to, to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a trumpet. It's a, um, a trumpet to the Jews and so on. This is a part. This is a rapture. Amen. It's not a sudden thing. Amen. There's one part that's sudden. There's a twinkling of an eye. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the rapture, amen, is divided into, into time periods that overlap into one another. There's the shout. Amen. And what is a shout? The shout is a, is incitement. Amen. Not so much excitement. You had a little bit of excitement, but incitement. That means that a shout is a message that comes to the bride to wake her up again, to shake her, to have a trim her lamp, to, for her to get ready that the bridegroom coming. And here's how you get ready. Amen. That's the shout. The shout message is the shout of the, uh, the king that is in the camp. Who's the king? Our Lord Jesus Christ. So the shout of the king is in the camp. And that was a message that was brought, brought by Brother William Marion Branham. Now you say, Brother Sipasad, who is this man? Well, I can't explain too much today. All I could say, we have looked across the whole world and we, we want to see a man that God has used that would show us how to get ready for this rapture. And there's nobody else across the face of the earth. Amen. With signs, wonders and miracles except this man called William Marion Branham. Now he has come. He has given a message. He has left. If you need to know more about it, on my website, on the missions, there's a 55 minute video, 13 seconds video. You will explain to me, explain to you more about my testimony and about this man and his message and why we follow his message. Just as we follow John, just as we follow Peter, just as we follow Matthew, just as we follow Paul and others, we follow this man's message. Amen. Because his message, amen, brings out what is in the word of God. It's a word of God is like a love letter. You got to read between between the lines, amen, hallelujah, amen, so that's the short message, amen, and brother Branham identify himself in that short message, but the short message is not not saying, behold the bridegroom comet, the short message also tells you how to prepare, uh, the short message is what I read in Revelation chapter 19, amen, that the marriage of the Lamb is about ready, amen, but the bride must get herself ready, that's the short message, the short message must tell you how to prepare for great translation faith, amen, hallelujah, and then after the short message, there's a transition in over now into the voice of the archangel, the voice of the archangel is the voice of Michael, the voice of Christ, Christ is that voice of the archangel that calls Lazarus out of the dead, 
dead. Amen. That is going to be so much in you that you're going to call the sleeping saints out of the dead. Amen. They shall rise up just like when Jesus cried with a loud voice. Hallelujah. He cried with a loud voice on Calvary. And what happened? There was an earthquake. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And what happened? The sleeping saints, the graves were opened up. And when he came up from the dead, Lord Jesus Christ, then the sleeping saints came. And what did they do? The Bible say they walk around Jerusalem. They walk around different places. Amen. That was one rapture. Amen. That's taken place. Amen. That was one resurrection. That was one time when the voice of the archangel spoke and the dead in Christ rise. But in today, there's going to be a voice of the archangel that's going to be in you. Because Christ in you, the hope of glory. The bride is getting herself ready. Amen. She's becoming the word. She's dressing herself in the perfect word of the Lord. Amen. She's receiving rapture in faith. Amen. And we saw that seven thunders give you faith for rapture and grace. And we found out that seven thunders are the seven voices of the seven spirits of God that were in the seven church ages. Just like God was red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. This color rainbow. That was out there out before the world was even formed. Before anything was happened. He was swirling out there in eternity. Oh, that's our God. That's our God. He's made up of seven colors. Eternal spirit. Hallelujah. Faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly love and brotherly kindness. That who he is. That is his attributes of his seven spirits. Amen. And we found out that those seven spirits must be birthed in you. You must be birthed in everyone to become to the statue of a perfect man. And when you become the statue of a perfect man... What is it? It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that is dwelling in you. And down will come charity. Down will come the dynamics to fill your mechanics. And what is going to happen? You will become that voice, that final voice for the final age. The voice of the archangel will speak out of you. It is not Jesus Christ coming in Palestinian garments once again to walk upon the earth to call the sleeping saints out of the grave. No, 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 no. When the squeeze is coming upon you, when you can't turn to the right, when you can't turn to the left, when you can't turn no more, you will shout out, hallelujah. You will scream a voice, amen. That voice will scream out. Now when that voice screams out, the sleeping saints cannot sleep anymore, cannot lie in the grave no more. California is going to shake. The, the oh, hallelujah is going to sink into the sea. The sleeping saints shall rise up. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Aren't you looking for that brother and sister? Oh, hallelujah. I mean, today there is so much to tell you what is happening between that voice, that shout. I'm sorry, that voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So much. I don't even know if I could tell you all. There's so much. The seventh seal. Revelation 19. Oh, Revelation 10, 1 to 7. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 27. Oh, I, I, it's so much to explain to you. Amen. But we're going to see how much we could summarize it. But I pray that when I give you these quotes, amen, you could take it down, jot it down, and then go and search it out in the scripture. Search it out in Brother Branham's message. And read and pray. And God is going to reveal it unto you. Brother and sister, is the most wonderful thing that will, has ever happened since, we, since the, the, the world was informed. Amen. It's the most wonderful thing. What is God's secret? God was this great eternal spirit, seven colors, and he wanted little ones. That's the whole secret. That's the beginning to the end. He wanted little ones. Amen. Like himself. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be praised. He wanted to be a puppy. He wanted to be a, pa a daddy, a father. That's his whole secret. That's his plan from the beginning. And he created angels to bring order to the universe, to help things along. Amen. Hallelujah. And what he did, amen. He was so much bubbling up in him that out of him came these seven colors and it flowed into one color, white light. And that was the logos. Amen. The logos that came and stood there before God like the pillar of fire. Oh, blessed be the name of churning pillar of fire. Oh, hallelujah. So know, amen, who your father is is glory to God. Amen. To what has happened at the voice of the archangel. Oh, so there's this breach between the shout and the voice of the archangel when the bride is getting ready. When seven thunders are uttering itself to that group, it's getting the bride ready. White garment. Christ being formed in her. Becoming 
the voice of the archangel. The prophet Barabbas said, the bride will become the word of God because Christ is going to be living in her. Christ is going to be walking her. Just according to Second Corinthians, I believe it is. Amen. As always, can remember his First Corinthians or Second Corinthians. I must write it down. Where he said, God said that I would do. You know, you are the temple of the living God. I want to walk in you. I want to talk in you. Amen. That's what's going to happen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And when you become the voice of the archangel, Amen. We preached on last Sunday service. When you become the voice of the archangel, what happened? It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That voice of the archangel, Hallelujah, is that call to the resurrection. The voice of the archangel could do only one thing. Amen. Call things unto life. Call things that are dead into life. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The voice of the, uh, the archangel is that voice of Christ that stood at Lazarus' grave and cried out and spoke that word and Lazarus came from the grave for uh, four days. Amen. That voice of the archangel will speak out of you. Hallelujah. And uh, what will happen? Amen. Praise God. We're going to talk about it uh, a lot, a little more today. Amen. Dynamics going to come upon your mechanics. Amen. Hallelujah. You will become the word. The bride will become the word of the living God. Amen. And when she become that perfect word that is living on, on the earth, amen, divine healing will be upon her. Oh, the word of God, you will, she will not be sick no more. There's no more sickness because she has become the word. Amen. She will speak the word and the sleeping saints will rise up. Amen. And walk the earth for 30 and 40 days. So I'm just summarizing. We'll talk about it a little bit again. And then, no, no this is that, that voice of the archangel. Hallelujah. And then from the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. What is it we're talking about? That is the message today. The transition in from the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. The overlapping. So now the bride, for the bride comes to maturity. Christ and her manifesting the works of Christ. The sleeping saints on the earth div- uh, rise up. Amen. Divine healing, a great thing to the bride. The bride body completely healed. Preaching to the souls that are lost. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. That that rejected the seventh angel messenger. Also that the church, she has to be also, she'll be preaching to that church that has to go through the tribulation. So what will happen? And the voice of the archangel, all the sleeping saints, all from all ages, all the way back to Adam will rise up. Amen. Hallelujah. My according, uh, will rise up upon the earth. Amen. What will happen? Revelation 19. Oh, glory to God. Revelation 8.1. What is in Revelation 8.1? There was silence in heaven. Why there was silence in heaven? Brother Abraham said, no angel move. Why was there silence in heaven? There were no human, no man in heaven no more. Why? Heaven emptied Revelation 19. Heaven emptied out all the host of heaven. The Bible said the armies of heaven. Amen. What are the armies of heaven? Those sleeping saints. Brother Abraham said, Revelation chapter 19. Amen. Revelation chapter 19. What does that represent? 7, 7, to 19, uh, uh, um, 7 to 16, he said that is the rapture. That's the coming of the Lord. What did he say about Revelation chapter 8 verse 1? Where there was silence in heaven when they broke the seventh seal. He said that's the coming of the Lord that no one knows about. Amen. So what it was, why was heaven silent? Heaven was silent because every single believer all the way back to Adam was upon the earth. Hallelujah. What was happening to them? Amen. There were, there were thousands of live voices upon the earth walking in meekness, walking in holiness, walking in righteousness. Thousands and thousands and thousands. Why? What were they? There were saints going all the way back to Adam, walking upon the earth. What? What were they? Manifestation of the sons of God. They were sons and daughters of God, full of power and authority, is living and invested, inheriting them. They could speak the word. It will flash like lightning. Amen. They will be the manifestation of the great Jehovah God. Seven colors living in them. Glory to God. Seven spirits. Amen. Living in them. You're walking. You're walking rainbow. Hallelujah. You're walking rainbow color. What it is. Amen. It is Jesus Christ living in you. Seven spirits of God living in you. Seven attributes of God flowing out to you. Seven live voices. Thousands of live voices. Thousands and thousands and thousands walking upon the earth. Amen. That happened between Revelation chapter 10. Verses, uh, let me just get it to you. This is what is taking place. This is taking place, Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. 
Amen. And this is taking place in Revelation chapter 10 in between. Hallelujah. There's so much I could... I certainly I haven't got to the quotes yet for you, brother. I'm just trying to give you a, 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 a summary this morning. Amen. Here's this now. Here's this angel. Revelation 10.1. He came down from heaven. He put one foot on the land. Amen. And one foot on the sea. Amen. And sea represents people. Um, nations, amen, and land, amen, hallelujah, that land is probably, I would, I would speculate and say, it's probably America, because there was a, there was a beast that come out on, out of America, so that land he put his foot on, was probably, uh, the land of America, amen, where the shout came out from, amen, and he had in his little book, uh, hand, uh, in his hand, a little book open, amen, and he cried with a loud voice, and we just read Jesus in Matthew chapter 27, cried with a loud voice. And then we read Jesus when, as he were, when he was at the grave of Lazarus, cried with a loud voice. Amen. And what was this voice? It's the voice of the archangel. Amen. Because he has that book now in his hand. The archangel is Michael. Michael is Christ. Amen. In the angelic form. Amen. Praise God. And when he cried, he, he cried like a lion roareth. And what a lion roareth. Amen. When he broke that first seal, there was a lion. Hallelujah. And that lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. He came, he come as a lion to rule in the last age. Amen. Cried with a loud voice. And now when he cried, what happened? Amen. Hallelujah. What happened? This voice of the archangel. What happened? Seven thunders uttered their voices. And these seven thunders that uttered his voices was the seven church ages. Amen. We are believers that are now upon the face of the earth because time law is about to be classified no more. Amen. Hallelujah. So all these believers, all the way back to Adam, all the seven church ages, ages believers are now upon the earth because what? The shout has gone forth calling the bride ready and the bride Lord has, uh, the bride now is the voice of that resurrection calling the sleeping saints the bride Christ in her being the voice of the resurrection calling the sleeping saints and these sleeping saints are the seven church ages amen believers that are now upon the earth so what is happening brother and sister what is happening you are seeing seven church ages uh, believers now upon the earth from all the way to Ephesus, uh, Ephesians to Laodicea, Laodicea, they're all now upon the earth. So what has happened? The voice of faith is here. The voice of virtue, the voice of knowledge, and all the way up to charity is now upon the earth. So that's where seven thunders are uttering their voices. Amen. What were they uttering their voices? They were singing grace and glory and honor and praise and holiness unto the Lord Jesus. They were uttering faith and virtue and knowledge. Amen. Right upon the earth under the seventh seal, which was the coming of the Lord under Revelation chapter 10 verses, uh, verses uh, uh, 1 through uh, 3. Amen. Amen. And when the seven thunders, it's only after now the seven thunder uttered their voices. What happened? Then, amen, the angel swore there's time no more. Uh, but what happened in between that? Be before he swore there's time no more, what happened? He they heard a voice again. Here it is. The voice, the voice of the archangel, the voice of Christ said to us, said to John, go and take the little book. Amen. That is in the hand of the angel. What is that little book? It's a revelation that God has bring of that secret he hid before the world was even formed. That he wanted little ones. He wanted little, little children. He wanted to be a puppy sitting there with little surrounded by little ones just like him. Amen. Look like him. Talk like him. Act like him. Perform the power and authority like him. That's the complete secret of God before the world was even formed. Amen. And here he is, amen, bringing us back to that perfection by what? By eating that little book. Amen. We eat that little book and what happens? Amen. It's wonderful. It's a great thing. We're feeling good about this wonderful revelation of the rapture. We're feeling good that Jesus Christ is coming. We're feeling good that the power of God is flowing through us, but the squeeze is on. We might not have food on the table. We might not have jobs. We wouldn't have money. But when the squeeze comes, what did Brother Adam say? What did the prophet say? Watch the third pull then. And what's that third pull? The third pull is the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Oh, speaking the word into a, for things into existence. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And brother and sister, amen. So the saints will be walking upon the earth, amen. Power and authority will be in you, amen. Because you will be Him. 
you will be a reflection of him. Hallelujah. And Revelation chapter 1, the angel voice of the archangel, live voices upon the earth, shaking the devil's kingdom. Michael, the voice of the archangel, in the bride, battling Satan. Amen. Battling, uh, the, this battle continues. This battle was there when, when, when Michael and, and Lucifer fought. Amen. Fourth angelic wars. Amen. That's what the Bible say. That's what the Bible say. There are forty angelic wars, and that that and, and on Calvary, Jesus won that battle. He lay his life down. He the war is won, but he but we have to continue to fight that battle to bring judgment upon the earth. I'll read the quote where Brother Branham talk about. Amen. This war has been going on. Uh, it, it, the war started on Calvary two thousand years ago, but because of the creeds and the dogmas in the church. Amen. God could not use his believers. He could not use the people. Amen. To fight against Satan. Amen. So the war, the victory is done on Calvary. But the bride continues the battle after 2,000 years. Amen. What is Revelation 8 to 11? That's the bride's final ministry. The final ministry of the bride. Why? She must prophesy. She must, she must preach to the souls that are lost. She must preach to those that have to go through the tribulation. She must preach to the ungodly and say, you ungodly shall surely perish. Fire is coming upon the earth to burn this earth up. She must preach the judgment of God. Amen. Revelation if you notice, Revelation chapter 10 comes between the 6th and the 7th trumpet. Amen. And what's that 7th trumpet? It's when Moses and Elijah, Amen. Moses and Elijah who is already upon the earth. Amen. When they are preaching to the Jews to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just in if you read Revelation chapter 11, verse 3 to 12, that 7th trumpet sounds. Amen. Hallelujah. And in that seven trumpet, there's so much things that we could talk about. Now the seven trumpet is sounded by Gabriel. Amen. Another archangel. Gabriel always sound the trumpet. Gabriel sound the trumpet for the Jews to come to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To the atonement. Amen. Gabriel sound the trumpet to, 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 dun, to, dun, to, 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 for us to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. For us to be changed in our body. Amen. To, to get a body that will look 18, 19 years old. To be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. Oh, that's the seventh trumpet. I just have a note here to read Revelation 11. 3 to 2, 3 and 12. 3 to 12. Let's just read this. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. There's so much in the Bible. So much that I could, that I could tell you about. Let's read this. Um, and, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 11 verse 3. Now this is the two, um, uh, Moses and Elijah, the two prophets. Now they came up in the rapture. They came up when the sleeping saints came up. Amen. So they're here for 30, 40 days. Amen. They're walking with the bride. They're walking with us. We are with them for 30, 40 days. Now that is my personal belief. I think I see it somewhere in the scripture, Brabram, in Brabram message. But brother, you don't have to believe what I believe. But they have to be here somehow. Nowhere did the Bible say they're going to just drop down from heaven. No. So if, if, if Brabram said all the sleeping saints, Rise and upon the earth, going all the way back to Adam. That means Moses and Elijah included. Amen. All he said, and only that. Revelation ten, uh, Revelation eight one says there was silence. Why? Abraham said, all of heaven emptied out. Amen. All of heaven emptied out of God. Uh, uh, only angels were there, and they were in awe of what was happening upon the earth. God's secret being made manifest. God looking down out of his color, seven color rainbow. And he's seen his uh, beautiful children, his lovely rainbow color children, a bride to his son Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Let's read. This is Moses and Elijah. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man shall hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must of this manner be killed. These have the power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Uh, tribulation period. And have power and over waters to turn them into the blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And they shall have, and when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, 
where also our Lord was crucified. Amen. Hallelujah. And so on after three days, I read to verse 12. Amen. Here's a, and after three days, verse 11. And after three days the, and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice again. Christ is the voice of the archangel. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up here. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. What was that? The seventh trumpet. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And what is the seventh trumpet? This is the fifth part. Amen. Of the rapture. The seventh trumpet. Gabriel blows the seventh trumpet. For three and a half days, three and a half years, the Jews received the Holy Spirit. They received the, go- the gospel. Preaching to them the Holy Spirit. They shall receive the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The same way as you receive the baptism of Sorry of the Holy Spirit. But what this trumpet sound is also. This trumpet sound. Amen. Is a, is a, is a, um, is a trumpet invitation, a summons to the wedding supper. And remember, hallelujah, we had this, um, this illustration about the old time, uh, Eastern custom of a wedding. Uh, you know that, uh, the Palestinian garment was a long garment and they used to wear sandals and they used to walk on the street where there was camel dung and poop and, 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 and cow dung and, and whatever dung and all sorts of dust and dirt and muck and myra where they're walking through. Amen. And they could trouble probably wash their feet as much as they could, but still it, it, it has dung on their feet and so on. But when you are, uh, when the shout message came to you, said, behold the bridegroom, I'm inviting you to the wedding, to, to the wedding supper. When you got that invitation, invitation amen when they get in the in the palestinian land they got that invitation what happened they came at the door at that house to go into the wedding supper but they're all filthy they're smelling like cow dung they're smelling like camel dung and horse dung and a donkey and all these things smelling that way you can't go and sit in a wedding supper like that and that's how you are when you hear the shout you're all filthy you're all dirty but when you come to that door that door is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He brings you into the door. There's when you come into that house, there's a special room. Amen. And there in that room is what you call a foot flush flunky. A foot wash flunky. And that foot wash flunky will wash your feet. He'll take away your filthy garment. He'll wash you clean. He'll anoint you with spankled and, and myrrh and, and all his, whatever sweet smell and savor and camphor and, and spices and make you smell good. He'll wash your feet of all that poop and dirt and all that filth. Amen. And all that dung that is upon you. He'll wash you clean. He who is this full foot wash flunky? This foot wash flunky is none other than your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he died on Calvary. He made a way that you'll be clean. He took your whole filthy garment. He washed you clean. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But before you could go into the wedding supper where you have to be anointed. You have to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. You have to smell clean. You have to smell good. Amen. You have to, your hair has to be combed. Your feet has to be washed. And you can't go with your own filthy garment. So he gives you a new garment. A white garment. Amen. And everyone will have the same white garment. Amen. He knows your size. He knows what you're looking for. He comes and gives you a garment. What is this garment? Amen. At the trump of God. Oh glory to God. Hallelujah. At the trump of God. Your body is going to be changed. You're going to be changed from if you're 75 years old. 76 year old sister. 70 years. 79 year old brother. You're going to be changed. Hallelujah. You're going to look like 19, 20 years. 18, 19, 20 years old. You're going to be a young man. A young woman your body is going to be changed and it's not going to be this flesh you're going to be changed in a special glorified uh, celestial body that you could walk through walls that you could go up to another dimension amen you could be caught up to meet the lord in the air that's the seven trumpet that's the summons to the bride to come up hither and that's the change of a twinkling of an eye oh blessed be the name and who blows that trumpet Gabriel blows that trumpet. You'll be caught away. You'll be changed. Amen. And when you're changed, I believe this is going to happen within a 30, 40 day period. Amen. I don't know what the Bible say. I mean, they rose from the dead and they walked with Jesus for about 40 days. Amen. And then they went 10 days afterwards. They went to Pentecost and then they received life. Then they received the Holy Spirit. No, I don't know. I'm saying according to the prophet, I'm a, I'm being a scholar, 30, 40 days, amen, it's going to be just like what happened to Jesus. It's going to happen to the bride. Just like Jesus shout, 
amen, uh, amen, and, and bring the people to the word, amen. And the voice, amen, cried out, and the sleeping saints rise up, so shall the bride be. She received the shout, she received the voice of the archangel, and she going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. But what happened at the shout, amen, and the voice of the archangel, the sleeping saints raised, when Jesus' uh, voice cried out with a loud voice, amen. The Bible didn't say shout, he said cried out with a loud voice, the sleeping saints arise. And so it's going to be with you and I, brother, in the voice of the archangel. You with a loud shout. Amen. And, and that shout doesn't come. Sleeping saints arise. No, it's not going to come like that. When did that shout come? When Jesus was just about dead. He was dying. Amen. Before he gave up the ghost. Before he died. Before he sent the spirit back to the Lord. Back to heaven. That is when in his worst time. The worst time, the Bible says, from the 6th to the ninth hour, there was darkness. The worst time, that's when the, sh that's when the voice of the archangel come forth. And brother and sister, the same thing is going to happen to the bride of Jesus Christ. The same thing is going to take place to you when it's going to be your darkest time. When you can't see, when you can't see what, where next you can go. When there's no money, there's no food, there's no job, there's this plague, there's a pandemic, there's a government upon you trying to force you to take a mark, trying to force you to do this, trying to force you to do the other thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What is going to happen when it's so dark? When they come knocking at your door with needles, amen. When they come knocking at your door with needles and they say, if you don't do this, amen. If you don't do this, what's going to happen? You're going to go to jail. You're going to not go, be able to go to the grocery. You're not, it's happening already in certain countries. Amen. I'm not telling brother take or not to take. But oh, when that come, time comes, my brother, brother Bram said the real mark of the physical mark of the beast is going to be in the tribulation. So you're not going to see that. But what he also says, he said, but they have been marked now. Amen, the spiritual mark. So brother and sister, what is going to happen is when that squeeze come upon you, when you can't do anything, when you're sick, when you're tired, when all you could do is fall upon your knees and you scried with a loud voice. Amen. That voice of the archangel is going to rise up and suddenly California is going to shake. And, and then what happens? Oh, hallelujah. The sleeping saints arise. They'll walk with you 30, 40 days. You'll see them. They're going to be with you. Then the trumpet sounds. And when the trumpet sounds, your body is going to be changed to 18, 19 years old. Amen. When it's 19, 18, 19 years old. And then Christ appears. Amen. Maybe at the end of the... The end of the... And when Gabriel lowers that trumpet sound, then Jesus appears in the sky. And what happened? Amen. Or maybe at that time we'll be changed at the trumpet sound. And then we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. To go where? To the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. So that's a mainly the summary, brother. That's kind of like the whole message I preach already. The summary lasts, what? 45 minutes. Amen. But a hallelujah. So now you understand. There are seven parts of that. There are seven parts of the of the of the rapture amen seven parts of the rapture that we just talk about amen and god is is uh you know is is, is perfect in seven and threes and so on hallelujah so this more this morning amen there's so much quotes i want to to read to you but i i think we cover we cover the summary so i'm going to bypass all these the summary quotes now we talk about that breach between this between the voice between the shout and the a voice of the archangel and what is happening in that breach you are becoming perfect you're coming to the adoption of the sons and daughters of god amen and that rapture will be of thousands and thousands of people, amen, going back 6,000 years. Oh, hallelujah. But what will, how, how will they come out of the grave? Rapture and faith going to come into you, amen. And how do you get rapture and faith? Seven thunders made sure the bride how to prepare for great rapture and faith, amen, hallelujah, amen. Let me just read this. God talked to Moses, Chicago, Illinois, Monday the 31st of August, 1953, amen. The second part of uh, paragraph E24, and I believe that the age has now, has come now, the miraculous, the phenomena, the baptism of the Spirit, 
and power and signs and wonders this great or this great pouring out of God's spirit in the last day and that's the thing that will bring faith into the people that will take a rapture in faith that will take the church into glory I believe it brother I'm saying Israel and the church I believe we're on the borderline tonight I was wondering about all my meetings amen and things how I had to cancel them out he said and the church he said I truly believe before the church can have have the rapture it got to have rapture in faith we can't even have faith for divine healing let alone rapture in faith God to have a faith that will change and quicken his body and be taken away. I believe there's a church on the road tonight. A power of the living God that men shall speak the word here and there and it will flash like lightning. And a church is coming out, not a psychologist, not some sort of put on, make believe, but a real, true, genuine, anointed Holy Ghost called out church amen so the voice of the end of code the voice of the archangel amen michael that voice of the archangel here brother Bram say amen beginning and end of the gentile dispensation jeffersonville indiana the night the ninth of january 1955 even service now brother Bram always say he said there's a battle going on between Gabriel and Michael. And this battle was started in the angelic wars when Satan was kicked out of heaven. And then it went down to Calvary. And, and there uh, uh, Jesus Christ battled. Amen. Satan. Amen. Fought against Satan at Calvary. Amen. But he left and went back to glory. Sent his Holy Spirit to build a church there in the, the, the seven church ages so they could fight back at Satan. He's getting a church ready. Now he could not have used this church all for 2,000 years. But in this day, the full of time has come the angel has descend with an open book so now is the time the bride is going to receive the power of the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit is going to fight Satan and finish this battle cast them upon the earth amen cast them out from from uh, the, the atmosphere and throw and cast them upon you let's read paragraph e36 and at that time Michael shall stand the great prince Michael was Christ of course who fought the angelic war angelic wars in heaven with the devil. Now listen to what Prabhu Ram said. Ad angelic wars. So there were many, many battles. Oh, think about it. He said angelic wars. There were many battles. Maybe we'll talk about that one day. Satan and Michael fought together or fought against each other rather. Amen. Praise God. Uh, end of quote. And just so hey, many, many men. So what we see in Satan and M Michael had always been in battle. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what is the, that voice? Christ is the voice of the archangel. Oh, blessed. That's the same voice that summoned John, summoned John up to heaven. That same voice. Amen. That summoned Lazarus out of the grave. The same voice that cried out when Christ died on Calvary. The same voice. Amen. That cried out, Lord, and said, Come up hither. Amen. That same voice. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're looking for the change of the body. Amen. Now the first change, now the ch it's not so much of a change, but it's going to be a great thing on divine healing on this body that you're living in here right now. It's not, the change is going to be, you're going to be like a young man or woman. Now you're not going to, in my belief, you're not going to change to an 18, 19 year old uh, young person yet. That's going to be in the twinkling of an eye to be caught up. Now, I could be wrong. Forgive me, brother. But according to my study, now, I am not prophesying. I'm not saying this is thus said the Lord, what God said unto me. No, I'm saying as a, as a, as a, um, a student of the word, I believe that when this voice of the archangel come, I believe that when dynamics come to your mechanics, you're going to be totally healed. You're going to be totally well. You're going to look the same way. You're going to be the same way, but you wouldn't have no glasses. You wouldn't have no sickness. You wouldn't have no diabetes. You have no heart disease. You would not have all these things. No, you'll be totally changed. Amen. Completely changed. You'll be well. No headaches, no eye aches, no back pain, no nothing. I believe that's going to happen to you first. Amen. Praise God. And when that happened, your body will be like a young man and a young woman. But you will not You'll look like a young man and woman. Not yet. Until the trumpet sound. And your body has to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. To be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. That's my study. That's what I believe. If you don't, if you see something else different in the prophet message, please send it to me, and I'm sure to look it over, brother. Praise God. I'm a human being, and I study. I study according to your word, according to the word of God. The true Easter seal, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Sunday, the second of of April, 1961, paragraph um, paragraph 143, the second the second part. Let's read the whole paragraph. 
The same thing he's going to do next. And remember, that's mean change your body. And remember, after the sign was manifested fully to Abraham and his group, then the next thing come was the change. And we've done seen everything to justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit, placing of the Son, and the signs and wonders of Him being in His presence to discern the thoughts of the heart and so forth. And He said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. We see that taking place right now. What was the next thing? The change of the body. Now, show that this we are looking for an expected son. Glory. Is that right? We cannot meet him in his bodies. If we are changed back to young man and woman, still we can't meet him because we have to meet him in the air. Here's this. Brother Bram say, even if we are changed back to, to like young men and women, if we are uh, no more sickness and all this stuff, here it where he says, if we are changed back to young men and women, Still, we can't meet him. But we got the Bible promise. That, why why am, I, am I saying this? I quoted Job last time. What did Job say? He said, Oh, the skin worms shall eat his flesh. Yet in my flesh I shall see God. That means that Job is going to come, going to take up that body that he left in the grave and come back again for 30, 40 days. And then we all will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So that's your proof, brother and sister, that we are going to be healed. We are going to be well. Job is going to take up his flesh. He's going to walk the earth. He's going to eat apples. He's going to eat mangoes. He's going to eat, uh, uh, eat bread. He'll drink, uh, drink uh, you know, um, uh, the fruit, uh, 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 any uh, passion fruit or orange juice, whatever. He'll be normal human being. Amen. Walking upon the earth. Why Job said so? What did we also uh, in, the, in uh, Psalm 16? That I will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will I suffer my holy one to see corruption. That means that this corrupt, this corrupt body will put on incorruption. Let's just continue reading. If we are changed back to young men and women, still we can't meet him because we have to meet him in the air. There has to be done something besides change us back to young men and women. You see, he's talking about a young man and woman in a time, in a me, in a in the form of your body being well, totally well, Amen. We have got to be changed and caught up to meet Him, in, and caught up in the air to meet Him. And the next thing coming is the rapture of the church and the change of the body of the sleeping saints to meet the Lord in the air. Here's it. So Job is going to end of quote. Job is going to rise up in his flesh, walk upon the earth with us, see us, and then what am Abraham say? He said, and the change of the body of the sleeping saints to meet the Lord in the air. And then what happened? He will be changed. Job and, uh, 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 and, uh, and Peter and James, they all will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and caught up to meet the Lord because you have to have a change. So it's a different body we're going to, act, we're going to take. We're going to take on the 16 elements. But in the 16 elements, we'll put our foot down and say, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Because Jesus Christ is living in me. He is the resurrection and life. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. So Job is going to come, be in physical flesh, eat normal food, eat rice and beans and meat and whatever. I, don't, I, I believe anything. Whatever it may be, 30, 40 days. Amen. Hallelujah. But then when that trumpet sounds, and then, oh, hallelujah, when Jesus is about to make His appearance in the sky, our bodies will go back to what? 18, 19 year old, 20 year old. Amen. That's going to be good. So if you are only 14 or 15 now, you're going to have an accelerated growth. You'll be 19, 20, 18, 19, 20. Young woman, young man. Hallelujah. Oh, we transitioning over from the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. Amen. The sleeping saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Believe us now this. Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Sunday, the 16th of uh, July, 1950. Paragraph E31. Now notice, when anything is going to happen, it first, God sends a messenger. So then he must send a messenger with a shout message. Amen. And the messenger will bring the shout message and show you how to prepare for the voice of the archangel. And then now there's a messenger coming for the trump of God. To, to you Now we cannot invite ourselves to the wedding supper. What is going to happen? Michael, the, uh, Michael is the voice of the archangel. But Gabriel is going to blow the trump. Here Brother Ram say. Amen. Uh, paragraph 31. Now, no, now notice when anything is going to happen on earth. First God sends a messenger. And that messenger is anointed by an angel. But sometimes minor angels come. 
Dear minor angels and major angels, now this angel that, knee, that came was Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. That was something major. And he come down. And when Gabriel comes down from heaven, remember, something's going to happen. Gabriel announced the first coming of Christ. Gabriel announced the second coming of Jesus. The trump of God shall sound first. An angel. So you see, Gabriel, amen. <clears throat> Gabriel, the archangel. Praise God. Gabriel, the archangel, will sound the trumpet. Well, how do you know that, Brother Sipasad? Well, Gabriel went to Mary and, and announced Jesus' birth. Gabriel went to Zacharias and announced John's birth. Amen. The angel Gabriel, hallelujah, has a special, amen, message. When there's a major message to take place, and don't you think, oh, great Father God, Elohim, seven spirits, seven rainbow, don't you think that this is a vital thing, amen, to, uh, to, to, to um, announce his son returning, amen, to catch his bride away? Don't you think it's a, it's a mighty thing? It's a glorious thing? And who is he going to send? Some little minor angel, oh, that will be good. He sends Gabriel directly from the throne of God. And of course, Gabriel is a reflection of great Elohim. Eli, Eli, Elohim. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. United Time and Sign. Jeffersonville, Indiana. And we find paragraph one to the um, 18th of August, 1963. Sunday service, paragraph 123. And now we find that the time comes when the trumpet sounds. And those sleeping saints back there would not be made perfect without us. They are dependent on us. Hebrews 11. And when they come together, they unite with the living ones. The church uniting with the word. When the church and the word uniting together, being, being common one, the dead saints with the living saints uniting together to be one and all coming together to unite with Christ yonder for the wedding supper of the Lamb. Oh, you know, I've read, end of code, I've read these things so many times since I've aged 12, 11 or 12. I've been reading the prophet message, but it has never come so much alive as what it is we are seeing today. Even last studying last night till almost 12 o'clock in the night. And then this morning, I've seen and seen things that I've never seen before about this rapture. And this has given me, oh yes, it's sweet in my mouth. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm enjoying the revelation. Here's what he's saying, brother Branham is saying, that the sleeping saints must unite with the living saints. Saints, so all those who, who died all the way back going down to Adam will rise up, amen, and they will be with us. We have to be united together. And I believe it's going to be a 30, 40 days period because no man know the day, no man know the hour. But that doesn't mean to say we won't know the week, we know we will know the month, we will know the year. Somehow God is going to reveal it unto us. Amen. Hallelujah. And of course, when we say it, people are going to say you're fanatical. No man know the day or the hour. Yes. No man know the day or the hour. But we know more or less when it's going to happen between 6 and 9. Here in America maybe. And some other country maybe a different, uh, different time. Amen. Or maybe 6 and 9 in, in Jerusalem. I, I don't know. The prophets say he's going to come between 6 and 9. That means that bef the heavens going to open between 6 and 9 o'clock in the morning. And Christ is going to appear. Hallelujah. But no man know the day nor the hour. But that doesn't mean to say we will know the week. We will know the week. God is going to reveal, we are his bride. Amen. We are his bride. Hallelujah. He wants to reveal this to us. When a young girl, amen, when a young girl wants to know, uh, what, uh, this young man, say I want to marry, he proposed to her. She wants to know about him. She wants to know what he likes to eat. She wants to know what he likes to wear, what cologne he wears, how do he does his hair, what clothes he's wearing, or um, uh, what time he go to bed, or what is he doing, what job is he doing. Amen. He's in his father's business. That's our Lord Jesus, his father's business. <laughs> oh, glory to God. So she wants to know everything about him. What kind of house are you going to build for me? Amen. Are you going to be a, a big white house with a picket fence, a white house on the hill? Uh, there be a gooby closet. And that's how the bride is. Hallelujah. The bride wants to know about Jesus. I want to know about him. I want to know what he's planning for me. I want to know what the, about this rapture. I want to know what is taking place so that I could glorify, I could glorify him. I could sit on my, on my little chair and I will think about Jesus. I'll think about his love to me. I think about his home he's preparing for me. I'm thinking about his Holy Spirit. I'm thinking about the sweetness of his love that is encompassing me. And while he's not here physically, I'm feeling his Holy Ghost. I'm feeling his love. I'm feeling charity overwhelming me. I'm feeling the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Oh, we're going to be united, amen, with Him and His love, amen. And the sleeping saints, amen, it's a united time, amen, it's a united time. Hear what? Oh, oh hallelujah. Expectations, Cleveland, Ohio, Thursday the 10th of August, 1950. Oh, hallelujah. Now listen close about the Holy Ghost, the angel of the Lord, amen, the messengers and so on. Hear what Brother I'm saying? Paragraph E, uh, uh, Thursday uh, the 10th of August, 1950. Paragraph E6, quote Brother Branham, someone told me here not long ago, said Brother Branham, said now why don't you give all the praise to the Holy Spirit and say that's the Holy Spirit. I said my brother, I must be truthful, whether it's the Holy Spirit, it's a gift sent from God. You ne he never said it was the Holy Spirit, never told me, that he was talking about, um, about the angel visiting him, amen. No, we, he never, it was, there's a difference between the angel of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Here's what he's explaining. He said, no, it's a gift sent from God. That's the angel of the Lord. It's a gift sent from God to minister unto the believers, minister unto saints, minister unto these ministers, these five ministering gifts of Ephesians 4.11. And this prophet, a, a, an angel, come down to minister. It's a gift. And Brother Abraham said he never said he was the Holy Spirit. Never told me who he was. He said, I'm sent from the presence of God. And it no, Brother Abraham said, and it does not feel like the Holy Spirit when it comes. When that angel comes to Brother Abraham, he said, it doesn't feel like the Holy Spirit. He said, no, the Holy Spirit, Brother Abraham said, the Holy Spirit makes me feel happy. But when that angel comes around, it isn't that feeling. It's a very sacred, august feeling like. And it's different, but it's sent from God. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, Brother Abraham, the ministry of angels, that was back in the Old Testament, like Daniel and so forth. But Brother Abraham said, that's an error, friends. That is wrong. And he said, since the Holy Ghost came, the Holy Ghost leaves the church. It's true. That's the truth. The Holy Ghost leads the church. That is true. But there's ministering spirits sent from God. Special gifts, friends. Now let me ask you this. We all know that John the Baptist was a Christian, right? Or a holiness man, right? A Holy Ghost man. He was born from his mother's womb full of the Holy Ghost. But it was an angel that came down and announced his birth. Gabriel, is that right? Before Zacharias, Mary also came. Gabriel came also. Now angels come to people. But when Gabriel comes, it's something major. See? Gabriel will announce the second coming. And the sound of the trumpet. The dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. The seven church ages. Zephyrsville, Indiana. Wednesday the 12th of May 1954. Paragraph, e four, one, paragraph 140. I want to read this again. He was in the spirit. The spirit come upon him. He began to see things. Now see, that's John. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, John said. And I heard, I got in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a, behind me a great voice of a trumpet. Trumpet, trumpet is an announcement. Gabriel, at the coming of the Lord, shall sound the trumpet of God. This was God's trumpet blowing. In other words, he's fixing to announce the eternal destination of the world. A trumpet. What is it? Get ready. I'm coming. I'm going to give you the revelation of Jesus Christ to give to the church. I will speak to you the, what will be the destination of the world for those who receive it and those who reject it. What it was. End of quote. A trumpet sound. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Gabriel is going to blow that trumpet. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now the tribulation is going to come upon the earth. While, this, while Moses and Elijah is upon the earth, tribulation, while the Jews are receiving the Holy Spirit, the tribulation period will be here, but the bride will be gone. Amen. When the Jews receive the, the Holy Spirit is going to move from the Gentiles and move on to the Jews. Amen. The bride will have a ministry. Amen. As I say again, maybe 30, 40 days. I don't know. Maybe more. He will have a ministry where they'll preach to the souls that are lost. Souls that rejected this word of the Lord. Souls that rejected the prophet message. Preach to the souls that are lost. Amen. Also be a testimony to those church, the church that will have to go through the tribulation. They will see the Holy Ghost upon you. They will see God moving in you and know that they have not received it. And they will come to that realization that they will be going through the tribulation. And what they will do? They'll fall upon their knees. They'll cry. They'll repent. They'll seek 
God. Amen. But they would not receive the Holy Spirit. Too late, too late. The Holy Spirit has now moved and is going on to the Jews. Amen. But what will happen to this church? Amen. They will cry out. They'll continue to live their holy life. They'll continue to live their righteous life. They'll continue to seek God. They will know that they missed the truth. They missed the rapture. And they are in the tribulation period. And how they will know that? They will see Jesus Christ manifested in you. Amen. That will give them a little hope. That will give them a faith. Now that's me brother. That's what I believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Might be your family. Might be your friends. Amen. Might be your neighbors. Might be people that are sitting next to you in the church pew. Amen. When they see Christ in you. The hope of glory. When they see you speaking the words. When they see it flashing like lightning. When it's coming to pass. When they see his signs, wonders and miracles taking place. When they see you speaking to the sleeping saints. And they can't see it. Oh, they'll fall on their knees. They'll cry and say, Oh, oh, oh God. They'll hold on to the horns of the altar. But their blood must be shed. Amen. And they will not raise up until a thousand years are finished. Only the Holy Ghost anointed seed word of God will make that rapture. Amen. And the rapture is only by election predestinated and elected you were there before the foundation of the world amen hear what the bible says brother Abraham say the rest of the dead live not for a thousand years amen they are not lost but the holy ghost filled bride will go in the rapture and the rest of them will come through the tribulation amen so what will happen in that transition between from the voice of the archangel to the trump of god or oh, divine healing going to be a mighty thing in that day why because you're not going to be well you're going to be healed you're going to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover divine healing going to be a tremendous thing let's read it amen god's provided way of healing chicago illinois monday the 19th of july 1954 a uh, uh, afternoon service no a um, I don't know what A, A means, what service it is, but paragraph E44, quote Rabban, now look friend, the time is coming, that when there's rising up a church, if we can't have faith for divine healing, how are we going to have faith for the rapture? But we got to move out friend, we got to get out of this old slow condition that we're in, step out, launch out, cut the shorelines, get into somewhere where you lose all sense of fear and doubt and there are all these things are possible brother, just as free as it was you got to set your sail towards heaven and nothing can stir you out of the way, hear what brother Abraham says here and that's the kind of church that is going to be one of these days according to the Bible where the angel poured out his wrath and diseases broke out, and men even rotted in their flesh, where they were standing, and the fall of the air come down, and eat off their shoulders, and eat the flesh of chief captains, and great men, and presidents, and warriors, and diplomats, and potentates, and everything else, eat, but the angels was given charge, don't you come near anyone, that got the seal of God, in their forehead, it's going to be, one of these days divine healing is going to be a great thing among the people. So let's get in condition. God wants us. You say, Brother Branham, you say, Bur then you say, well, Brother Branham, you say, let us. That's what God's await. God is waiting on. God, we are, wa we are waiting on Jesus to return. And Jesus is waiting on us. You say, well, how can that be? Or what can we do? The Bible says the hour to come. And the bride has made herself ready. Hallelujah. End of quote. Listen, I just want to read back this word again. Brabrandum is saying, what is going to happen? You're going to see this. We're going to see this in the pre-tribulation period. What? Diseases is rot. Diseases broke out. We already have this crazy virus and all these things that are broken out. Amen. Oh, and God help the people. Praise God. And when the angel poured out his rot and diseases broke out. And men even rotted in their flesh. Where they were standing. Let's so, let that soak in, brother and sister. What are you going to do when you see men and women rotting in their flesh and the buzzards eating out of them? That's what the Bible says. That's what Brother Abraham says. It, it may seem like a fairy tale, some crazy thing, but that is going to happen. What are you going to do if you are not in Christ? What are you going to do? Hear what Brother Abraham say. And the fowl of the air come down and eat off their shoulders, eat the flesh of chief captains, great men, presidents, warriors, diplomats, potentates and everything. They're going to rot in their flesh. Eat. But the angel was given charge. Don't even come. Here Brother Brown said. He said now divine healing is going to be a mighty thing in that time. What is that time we're talking about? The time we're talking about is that squeeze going to come upon you. Divine healing going to be great. You're not going to be sick no more. Amen. What are we are waiting on? No. He's waiting on you to come to perfection. So that day Michael shall stand. Amen. 
What is, what is going to happen? When Michael shall stand for you, Michael has something to do with the resurrection. Michael is the voice of the archangels, which is Christ. He has something to do with resurrection. Amen. I don't understand it fully. What he's going to do, how he's going to do it. You know why? Remember, uh, Lucifer, who always corrupt the body, because he has, he has the authority to do it. He couldn't find Moses' body nowhere. He looked all over. He looked all on Sinai. He looked by the Red Sea. He went back in Egypt. He went down to Palestine. He looking for Moses' body. He couldn't find Moses' body. But what he did, he knew Michael had, uh, was, had something to do with the resurrection of the body. He knew Michael had something to do with, with Enoch being taken up. He knew Michael had something to do with uh, Elijah being taken up. He knew something. He knew that. Amen. And he recognized, amen, that, uh, that Michael, amen, w- uh, was that angelic anointing of God, hallelujah, that has to do with resurrection of the body. So he confronted Michael. He said, Michael, where is the body of Moses? It's my responsibility. It's my duty to corrupt that body. I want that body. Give me that body. And what did my, Michael say? He said, may God eternal, the Lord rebuke you. Who's the Lord? The Lord Jesus Christ, amen, who died on Calvary. The Logos that come out of He said, the Lord rebuke you. And you know, the devil knew the Lord. They knew that he knows that Logos. He recognized the Logos. And the devil had nothing to do but a step back. Up to this day, he doesn't know what happened to Enoch's body. He doesn't know what happened to Moses' body. He doesn't know what happened to Elijah's body. But he's going to see that body. And sure, then he will have his claim upon the body and they will rot. And they will die. They wouldn't rot, they will die. Yeah, three and three and a half days, the Bible says. But the life will come back into them in Jerusalem. Amen. So what it is we see in? What it is is this, this transition of the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. What it is we are walking in the light of the morning star? What is happening? You're going to have a ministry. Amen. That voice of the archangel is going to be so much in you. You're going to have a ministry like Christ. You're going to speak the word. Go raise the dead. Heal the sick. Oh, give sight to the blind. The cripple walk. The deaf ears open up. Christ in you, the hope of glory. What is it happening? Why this has to happen? It has to happen because you are a morning star. And why now? What does a morning star do? A morning star reflects the coming of the sun. Amen. So what are you doing up on the earth? When seven thunders are in, you are, are screaming out. When the seven church ages, all the, mess, all the messengers of the church age, all the believers of the church age are there upon the earth. What is happening? You're, they are all morning stars. They are reflecting the coming of the Son of God. Amen. The sun is coming. So what is happening? You are reflecting His great authority. You are reflecting His power. You are manifested sons and daughters upon the earth. Amen. Let's read it. The beginning and end of the Gentile dispensation. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday the 9th of January 1955. Evening service. Amen. Paragraph E41. Quote, Brother Branham, and at that day Michael shall stand for the people. He ain't standing for the nations. He's standing for the people. And many of those that sleep in the dust of the earth shall rise to everlasting shame and contempt. But those that are wise and turn unto righteousness shall, si- shall shine as the stars forever. Hallelujah. A tent of cottage. Why do I care? They're building a the palace for me over there. Come over to see me someday, Brother Branham say. Paragraph E44. What is it? We have walked out and looked at the great morning star as she begins to move yonder. What does the morning star say? The morning star is only reflecting the supreme light of the sun coming. Is that right? The morning star, the reason it's so bright, you know why it is? The sun is so much closer to it. It's pressing on and the morning star hails the coming of the sun. All right, you morning stars, it's time to go to hailing his coming. Shine, morning stars, rise early. It says the sun shall soon be here. And when we look and we see that morning star just as glistening in the skies, it means that the sun shall shine pretty soon. And when you see the morning stars of God rising and shining to the glory of the resurrection of Jesus Christ shows that the Supreme One is pressing on. The lights are gathering, but the morning star hollers. Hold it. It ain't long till daylight. Hold on. 
It's not long to daylight. Just keep holding on. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, end of quote. Hallelujah. So what it are you are? The morning stars. You are reflecting the Son of God. What would this ministry have? Every ministry. And what would that ministry? There's a quote I read last time. So what does that ministry identify? It, a ministry identify the coming of the Lord. You'll have the ministry of the morning stars. We could preach on that another time. Amen. But before every, before the atomic bomb strike the earth, the bride will be caught up. That's exactly right. Amen. Yeah, Brother Abraham said, I think that exactly. The angel of destruction is holding the hand of Russia with the atomic bombs until the church comes together as one great body of Christ. You find out, will the church go before the tribulation? Amen. Uh, before the body of Christ. There yeah, is the angel of God with the same message, performing the same signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And this grave, you're going to be acquainted with this Lord Jesus. You are flesh of his flesh. You're going to be born of your, your flesh that is going to be upon this earth that Job said will be his flesh. Amen. No more sickness. Oh, hallelujah. No, no more, no, no more pain. Amen. No more headaches and, and, and feeling bad and all. No more. Amen. Why? In my flesh I shall see God. Just as Job said, we are waiting and longing and crying and begging. Come, Lord Jesus, wrap to your church, amen, and get it away quickly, Lord. Oh, what we need, amen, hallelujah. What was the Holy Ghost given for? Jeffersonville, Indiana, Thursday, uh, the 17th of December, 1959. Amen, paragraph 51. We are in a day now. Back then, there wasn't half as smart as today. We couldn't, they couldn't make an atomic bomb. We talk about days of Jesus or so an automobile. They didn't have science and things like we have now and all kinds of mysterious things to try to say man blew it together by some dust and so forth and take some analysis and try to prove it to infidels or make infidels other people. But now, when we need it, the Spirit of God raises the standard. What is it? He is pouring in His Spirit. Then those who are resting out yonder in the grave or under the altar of God, as the scriptures say, are crying. How long, Lord? How long? How much longer? God's waiting on me and you. The church is waiting on me and you. Adoption time. When God can pour into us His fullness, His power, His resurrection. Here He's pouring into us His resurrection. The same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is going to be in you. He's going to pour it in you. Glory to God when God can pour into us His fullness, His power, His resurrection. And when the church and Christ become so close together till Christ becomes visible among us and raises the dead and we go into the rapture. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, and we are going to show after a while just to, who are filled with the Holy Ghost goes in the rapture. For the dead, in, the, the dead live not for the space of a thousand years. That's right. Only Holy Ghost filled people was what went into the rapture. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Confirmation of Commission. Temple, Arizona. Monday, the 22nd of January, 1962. Paragraph 228. Quote Brother And Jesus is so close to coming to the earth now until His power has been, been to catch the people. Until His power has begun to catch the people. And winding them up. Getting them ready for the bride. Getting ready to be caught up in the rapture. A church that will just fit just exactly to be taken up. Through its power will draw all the rest of them that's born again out of the earth. Jesus Christ is coming. Oh, the rapture is at hand. Amen. Let's, uh, the rapture is at hand. Hallelujah. Oh, God is raising up the believers. Amen. We run out of time. I have to drop, uh, leave out a lot of quotes. Angels. Hallelujah. Oh, a ministering spirit unto you. Amen. They will appear unto you one of these days. You will see that angel of God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and you know that church, you will be the voice of God for the final voice to the final age. Amen. Voices. Amen. Hear what Brother Bram say. Revelation chapter 4. Jeffersonville, Indiana. The 8th of January 1961. Now, we are looking to see what are these live voices. What are these seven thunders that are upon the earth? The, the seven thunders utter their voices in one group here. But these seven thunders uttered over, uh, over 2,000 years in the church ages. But here is in Revelation 10, 10, it's saying that seven thunders utter their voices there. When what happened? When he shout. Oh, amen. When, I'm sorry, when the voice screamed out, amen, after the book is open. Now, after the book is open, here is seven thunders banging itself all together. Seven thunders right there. One shot. What it was? S angels, messengers, Believers from the seven church ages upon the earth. And hear what Brother Abraham say. 
Amen. He said they had a voice of God. Amen. Paragraph uh, uh, 116. Amen. The voice of the throne. Notice in this throne, before the throne were, was the seven stars. The voice of the stars. Voices, you see. There was more in the Revelation 4 here or 5, we find out. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. Not one voice. Voices plural. What was it? God speaking to the church, reflecting himself to the seven spirits. When the true anointed of God speaks, it is the voice of God. To reject it is to remove the candlestick. See? Voices. The voice of the seven church ages over here in the corner. The voice is speaking with thunders and lightning. You hear what Brother Abraham say? Brother Abraham say the seven voices, the seven church ages, the seven thunders. Here it is. Right here. Praise God and continuing. The preacher called her to preach his and to live to. If you can't live your message, then you stop preaching it. And you're supposed to live so you're supposed to live your sermons. All right. Here was voices. And how we need in Jeffersonville thousands of lived voices. The thunder of God thundering out in sweetness and holiness and purity, undefiled lives, walking around in the earth today without a blemish. Yes, sir. Real Christians. That's the thunder that's against the enemy. The devil don't care how much you holler. He don't care how much you jump up and down. He don't care how much you shout. But what hurts the devil is to see that sanctified, holy, consecrated to God. Say anything to him. Call him anything. Just as sweet as it can be and move right on. Oh my. That throws him out. That's the thunder that shakes the devil. So what Brother Abraham saying? He's looking for thousands of live voices thundering out in meekness and holiness and sweetness and perf perfection. Amen. That's what is those seven thunders. That's there in Revelation 10, 10. Amen. That we're talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name. Now here's, G, here's the Lord talking about this battle that was taking place that we as the bride of Jesus Christ must continue the battle. And that battle will be won when those seven thunders or all of us utter our voices. And what are, what are we saying? O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? For death is swallowed up in victory. Jesus Christ died on Calvary. He was, the, he was the one that took the sword and he took away death and hell and the grave from the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Satan has no control over death no more. God is alone, sure, to take the believers, but to, the, um, to take the unbelievers and whoever even take the believers. But oh, hallelujah. O oh, death, there is coming a time. There's coming a time when seven voices, seven church age messengers, seven believers, seven, seven groups of believers from these seven church ages will be upon the earth and they'll be screaming. They'll be screaming faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brother love, brother kind. They'll be screaming. They'll be screaming the love of God and they will put their feet down on that rock of revelation. They'll put that feet rock or their amen. And just like on Calvary, just when Jesus died and rose again, he said, I am the resurrection of life. The bride will be thundering and saying, I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. He shall not leave my soul in hell, which hell is upon the earth, but and he shall not suffer my whole oh, did me would not suffer me to see corruption. What is it? There's a thundering voice. He said, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? It's going to happen here upon the earth, brother, when these seven voices, seven thundering you will be thundering out. Amen. Before the angels say time is no more. Oh, blessed is you going to demonstrate the power and authority of God. Why? Because you are son of God. You are daughter of God. You are, you'll be flesh of his flesh. You'll be bone of his bone. You'll be spirit of his spirit. You're going to be so full of the Holy Spirit. You will kill. You could do nothing else. But whatever the Father show you, that you will do. You'll, that you'll do. You'll speak to a tree. You need that apple tree to move from there, cross over the river, and go onto the other side, the apple tree, so that believers who are sitting there could get the apples. What you'll do, you'll speak to by the, the Holy Spirit to show you and say, yeah, I'll give you the authority, son. Go ahead. You'll watch that apple tree. You said, apple tree, raise up. And go and plant yourself over there, under the, by near those believers there, that they will reach up and pick apples, and the apple tree bend your branches, so they will reach up and pick the apples. And what will happen? As soon as he speaks the word, hallelujah, a manifested son of God, that apple tree will raise up, 
and the roots will shake up itself. It will walk across that river. That tree will walk across the river and it will go and sit where the believers are and it will settle itself down into the dirt, put back its roots back into the dirt and then its bowels, its branches down and the believers will be able to reach for the apples. That is the inherent power that is in you now. It's going to happen. Amen. You say, Brother Sipa said that sound like a fairy tale. Brother, it's not. It's going to happen to us now. Amen. Oh, uh, now it's, it's happening in you. Amen. But it's a promise. Amen. It's going to take place. Hallelujah. Amen. The manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Amen. The Feast of the Trumpet. Uh, Jeffersonville, run out of time. Um, Sunday the 19th of July, 1964, morning service. Paragraph 206. Now notice, while that group is a riding, making themselves ready to stomp out everything that wouldn't agree with them, there's another group being made ready. After a while, Revelation 19, the next time the church is heard, she comes also, not exactly on horses, but the Bible says he was on a white horse, and the hosts of heaven were following him on white horses. That's right. While this group down here has got 2,000 years bound at the river of and has been bound for 2,000 years. Also the church has been bound, the Holy Spirit for nearly 2,000 years, under martyrdom, back there, and under the church ages. It has been bound. So uh, let me interject here. So what Brother Branham saying, there are two things. Satan had his people, had his, uh, these supernatural um, uh, charges or, or evil spirits. They were bound by, by certain ecclesiastical things in the church. And the same way that the Holy Spirit was bound because of the martyrdom and the persecution and the people drifting away from the world. So they both were bound for 2,000 years. The Holy Spirit was not, be, was not able to move in the uh, freedom and liberty because the full atonement was not yet there. Amen. The time didn't come yet. So hear what Brother Brown say here. Uh, for nearly 2,000 years, under martyrdom back there, under the church ages, it has been bound, not at the river Euphrates, but at the door of creeds and dogmas, that the Holy Spirit cannot work in the church because of man-made system. But she's going to be uh, going to be liberated. She's coming back. That's what the Bible said. And those and those two meet. Those two meet one another. One another on the battlefield. Lucifer and Michael again, like in the beginning, they have been bound for two thousand years almost. Almost 2,000 years. So just like in the beginning, Lucifer and Michael fighting against each other. Michael is fighting against Lucifer. Take to take complete control of this earth. Amen. And the bride is going to raise up. And who is what? What's going to happen? She's going to have the voice of the archangel. She's going to have that authority and power and that same anointing that Michael had to, to cast out Lucifer. Who is going to do it? Christ and the bride is going to do it. No, it's not the bride. But Christ and her are going to do it. Amen. Christ in you the hope of glory. So they said the two have met in the battle. Michael and Gabriel. Like in the beginning. They have been. But they, they, but they have the people that they work with. They have been bound for 2,000 years. Because they couldn't work. Amen. Brother I'm saying not exactly 2,000 years. But the Romans. And he went on to explain. Amen. Praise God. And here it is again. Repeating itself. And here is that ecclesiastical system. Coming right back. Smothering out trampling out everything that's called God. Oh, they got their, their systems and organizations, denomination, but they don't have nothing to do with the Bible. They tell you quick, they don't believe it. Say what the church says. But what God says, that is the word. The bride is with the words. They are one. You hear Brother Abraham say? The bride, and the, the bride and the word become one. How can they be one when the word that's wrote in there becomes in you and make you and the word becomes one? Amen. Someday when Jesus comes, every wrinkle, every gray hair, every withered arm, everything else will pass away and God will bring it back in its beauty, in its splendor of for someday to live with Him forever. Amen. And how that happens? The Word must be living in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just read this, this, uh, this here. Adoption. Jeffersonville, Indiana, 22nd of May 1960. Paragraph 1, paragraph 180. Amen. And when it was when he, when you're out of the way in redemption with a brand new body, you turn back to a young man altogether again, or a young woman. You're never going to die no more. And you look down on the earth and think, I could enjoy some grapes and some good cold water. And you know, I don't need it here, but someday Jesus is coming. And this angelic body, his, this theophany that I'm living will not come through the womb of a woman anymore. It's not, it will, it, it's not come through sexual desire no more, but it comes that he was born without sexual desire. I will be resurrected without it. 
and he will speak someday and the dead in Christ shall rise and the body that I once lived in will resurrect into a glory, glorified body and I'll walk and I'll talk and I'll live and I'll enjoy. Hear what Brother Brown said. He knows he was going to die. He said when Jesus comes, he's going to resurrect in a, a glorified body that he could walk and talk and live and enjoy the fruits and the vine and the ages. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So you're going to wrap yourself in the robe of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And say, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, when is your victory? So we'll talk about, we talk a little more about next time about the trump of God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to be caught up. Amen. Here what, uh, uh, um, this is, uh, I'll just read this quote out of uh, Abraham and Seed after him. Chicago, Illinois, 23rd of April, 1961. Paragraph E78. Amen. <clears throat> Paragraph E78. Now that's what we are like now, thinking, what's going to be? What? The world, when we come, when we pass from glory. Why? When they can take a scope and see 120 million lives of Light, light, years of light space, and that ain't one sixteenth of an inch in eternity. Hallelujah, glory! But Jesus came from heaven to earth in a thought, glory, and the church would be the same way. Pass light with such speed, glory to God. You say, how can it be done? How do I know how? The only thing I know how now is inches and yards and miles and days and weeks and hours and minutes. That's the way we figure things. Figure we are in the womb of the earth. But wait until we are born once on the other side. Glory. Wait till this change come. Yes, then space to come from, f from the form. Glory, there's one split half instance. Such speed pass right through the wall. Don't even know it's there. There you are. These earthly things will be so simple. Oh my, there won't be nothing to it. No, sir. Now we all know that when Jesus come, comes, we'll be caught up in a rapture. And we know our bodies will have to be changed first. We wouldn't be able to just go back to young men and women, but it would be changed because Abraham and Sarah's body had to be changed in a way that they would receive a son. That's Abraham, his body had to be rechanged to receive the promised son. After being justified, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, called by election, manifested God of glory in the midst of him. And when his body was changed in order to receive the promised son. And the next thing, well, the church, uh, the next thing <coughs> happens to the church is the rapture. We have to be changed and caught up in the air to meet him. We can't meet him on earth. We've got to go in the air to meet him. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Oh, our bodies will have to be changed. We just can't turn back to young men and women. We've got to have a different kind of body. So you can be, you can be caught up to, in the air to receive the promised son. So you'll be changed and be young. Amen. But your body is going to be changed. You're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the... Uh, oh, praise God. I'm just going to um, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, just let's read this. This is our final quote. Amen. A prophet like unto Moses. Amen. <clears throat> um, 20th of November, 1959. San Jose, California, Friday. The 20th of November, 1959. Paragraph, uh, paragraph E4. Now, Brother Abraham in paragraph E4 identify uh, God's calling to him to bring the church into one unity. Amen. But he also said, Amen. He also said here, he said, now we notice that, paragraph E5, that even Nate itself is calling for that day. Nate is grown and everything seems to be out of Kada. The sun doesn't shine like it used to. Science tells us that the world bulges out so many feet in the middle. That's making the ocean more shallow in the center and deeper towards the North Pole and the South Pole. Well, there's just nothing. The stars are out, out of their orbit and they, uh, and, uh, and uh, should, and, as they should be. And everything else seems to be out of cater. It's all waiting, groaning for that day of perfection when our Lord Jesus Christ shall come and perfect everything that's imperfected. And even to the church that's imperfected now will be perfected in the love and power of Christ. Till, uh, even till death itself won't have any power over the church any longer. Those that have died along the road, down through the watches, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, to the seventh watch, died waiting for this. Their death cannot hinder them from enjoying it because the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, what a glorious time we are living in. I interject here. Notice what he said. He said the seven watches. So he's talking about the Laodicea watch. There are those that have died in the Laodicea watch that are waiting. We have come out of Laodicea watch and we are now setting in heavenly places in the bright age. Amen. Praise God. But the, the physical Laodicea, the, the Laodicea age will end. Hallelujah. And the bride is caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Now each night the Lord, um, hear what Brother Brown say. There's no reason for any person in this. <coughs> Let me just read. I think I missed something here. Um, praise God. Let's read paragraph E7. Now each night the Lord willing, we're going to pray for the sick. People, speak from the word, make altar calls, and the sinner that's here, that doesn't know God, let me say this to you, my sinner friend. You run to the rock just as fast as you can. And you here that haven't received the Holy Spirit after you have been saved, don't leave this building until you have received it. For the promise is to whosoever shall let him come in. There shall be every person in the building. There could be every person in the building tonight can receive the Holy Spirit tonight. No reason why you should not. Because it had been on earth for 2,000 years since the day of Pentecost. And it's here tonight to baptize every believer. There's no reason for any person to leave the building sick tonight. Because the great physician is here. Jesus Christ. No need for anyone to walk out on crutches. Be wheeled out in a wheelchair. Go out sick. Because the great physician is here. The price is paid. Everything's in order to just something to happen. Now to speak about his promise. And watch it. Bring it to pass. Amen. We would say Jesus. Amen. Paragraph 84. So we would see Jesus. What more would it be if a man come in here with blood all over him and nail scars and things? Jesus, when he comes, every eye shall see him. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess when the body of Christ returns. I believe in his literal coming. Corporeal, corporal body descending from the heavens with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise, but his spirit is here with us. And as the church, like the pyramid, comes into the point, so has the church in the days of Luther, in the days of Wesley, in the days of Pentecost. And now just before the head soon comes, the church has to be honed so perfectly to the same ministry that he did here. Amen. His spirit, so predominant, will bring the same body right up into it and resurrect the whole thing. That's exactly right. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're looking for the coming of the great millennium day. Amen. We're looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking for dynamics to come upon your money mechanics. If you don't have the Holy Spirit. If you do, haven't been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises unto you and to, and to your children. And to, us, and to the world and to as many as the Lord thy God shall call. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be. Don't leave. Oh, don't, oh, don't uh, stop thinking about receiving this Holy Spirit. Amen. Get on your knees to receive this Holy Spirit because without it, it's the token. Without it, you could not make this rapture. You cannot enjoy all these wonderful things that is coming and planned for us. Amen. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. Oh, it is Jesus. Shall we stand? Yeah, yes, it's Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garment and his blood had made me whole. One more time. It is Jesus, yes it is Jesus, it is Jesus in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood had made me whole shall we pray father god we've come to the end of our broadcast you've been so good to us again i went over a few minutes lord but oh god just encourage the people just to let them hear the word of the lord to know about this rapture to know the good things that you have planned for them to know the lord god that what is their plan for them in their life lord Father God, I pray that you continue to anoint them, continue to touch them, and should we meet again on Wednesday night service, may you come down in your glory, come down in your grace, come down in your mercy, to Lord, to speak unto your people once again, Father. 
Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for the revelation of the word. Thank you for healing. Thank you for refilling. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, may you fill the people who have not received the Holy Spirit. Let them cry out to receive the Holy Spirit, Lord. Those that are backslidden, let them come back to you. Those who don't know you, bring them to you, Lord Jesus, I pray. We ask these things, Lord. Help them, Lord God, for the remainder of the week. Be with them in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may His face to shine upon you and give you peace, give you joy, give you love, give you understanding. And may He bless you. Amen. For the coming of the Lord is near. Amen and amen. Take the name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take his name wherever you go, O oh, precious name, O oh, how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name, O oh, how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. God bless you all.